gospel soul. Breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the word of God. Join Pastor Jackson and friends as we rightly divide the word of truth. You can find my gospel soul on Facebook, Twitter, but you can also find me, Denise Jackson, on Facebook and Twitter as well. Now, keep up with us also on the Denise Jackson Ministries website. That's at www.denisejacksonministries.yolasite.com. And remember, with God, all things are possible. We also have a special guest. Okay. Yeah. Um, we also have a special guest for the end today as well. Uh, we have um, my good friend. I think I've been friends for so long. It's kind of proper to call that person a brother, right? Right. So I'm um, a good friend, a brother, um, a friend in ministry, Thank friend you. in life. Um, my brother Brandon Law. Are you on the line, Brandon? Yes, sir, I'm here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Hey, Brandon. How y'all doing tonight? Doing quite well, man. How you doing? You kind of low on that. Can you all get more into your mic? Can you hear me now? Can we, can we hear you now? <laughs> we can hear you now. Good. Good. Like the variety of people can hear me now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How was your Perfect. week, man? How was your week, man? Man, everything is good, man. The Lord is kind. The Lord is faithful, man. Was able to minister the word on yesterday. The people were blessed tremendously by the word. Great things, man. And I'm Amen. excited Amen. for this next place in ministry where God has me. And um, what church is it that you fellowship at? I fellowship at Christian Life Community Church under the great leadership of Bishop Dwayne Sheridan. We are over in, in Baytown, Texas, 2100 James Bowie, Baytown, Texas, uh, where the word is tremendously brought forth. And uh, my leader is definitely a chosen vessel from God. Amen. 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 And um, just a little background information um, on me and Brandon here. I met Brandon when I was um, on a ministry team over at Restoration of Praise yeah. Church in um, yeah. Texas. Yeah. And um, I had looked over the fact that he was um, an alpha and became friends with the media. <laughs> anyway, look at you. So <laughs> yes, God told me to, um, you know, branch out. <laughs> but um, this has really been a great friend of mine. Um, Jan, he was just being on the ministry team together. We really just wanted like a friendship amongst each other, especially when I was going through um, my hard times, my divorce and everything. He was, like, right there for me the whole Absolutely. time. So Amen. I definitely appreciate that. Um, Absolutely. And man. then we got a chance to fellowship with him, right? Amen. And join him as we got to see him marry his. Um, beautiful wife. His new, beautiful, beautiful. The newlywed. Okay. The newlywed. And that was a beautiful wedding right there himself. It was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're trying to join you there in married life, man. We're trying to join you there, man. Say that again. I said we're trying to join you there in married life. <laughs> man, listen. Whatever the Lord has for y'all, y'all do exactly what, what the Lord say, man. Marriage is is just sacred. Marriage is beautiful. You just have to be connected with the right one. 
you know, I've had my share and uh, had my experiences, man. And the Lord is still Amen. kind. Uh, so Amen. you have to be connected. You have to be connected with the right one. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? So if you're not on one sound and one accord, then uh, uh, it will be chaos. It will be confusion. So right. you have to pray, seek God for direction on who God have created you uh, to be with and for you to have. So you got to be very strategic mm-hmm. and be specific with God. Just Don't just re- be us, be, try to be all super deep in spirits. No, be specific with God. Tell God exactly what you want, what you need. And I promise you, he'll mm-hmm. give it to you. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. That's one thing I did notice, amen, is that um, we, me and Mary both first met each other. The one thing we said is, hey, if we ever get married again, the guys be God of us. <laughs> amen. <laughs> because <Amen. laughs> we didn't always try to do it on our own. Right. And we see that didn't quite work out too well. So, um, yeah, that's what we said in the very beginning. Like, hey, I'm not moving again until God tells me. And, you know, thankful enough, God told us both around the same time. Amen. So, you know, it was easy for us to make that transition. But what's also crazy about it is that um, it's like our marriage was prophesied over through the very beginning of our relationship. Um, mm-hmm. My cousin, when I talked to him for the very first time, talking to him with her on the phone. He's like, oh, yeah, I got y'all on on the two-year plan. And we, like, sitting there in the car laughing, like, what? What do you mean the two-year plan? He's like, yeah, man, y'all will get married in two years. And then, sure enough, here it is, year two, and we signed a nut. So, that was a problem. Isn't it, Brandon, like, me and Larry had, what was it, the second date? Or was it the first? Was it the second date? It wasn't even a date. I had to pick you up from work. Oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't even a date. <laughs> this week we hung on work randomly and was on the phone with his cousin. And and he and his cousin was like, oh, okay. Like, he, we only talked for like 15 minutes. And he was like, well, I want to be the best man in the wedding. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, I'm giving y'all two years to get married. This is destiny. This is destiny. I'm giving y'all two years to get married. <laughs> but he also told us that we had to move to Dallas with him. So yeah, you see that part? Isn't that? Yeah, that part. Is, yes, that part did not. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's definitely a blessing. Okay. Um, being connected to the right one, as you say. Absolutely. It's, um. Yeah. So definitely. So I'm um, going to get into it, you all. Let's get to the Soaring Like Eagle show. It's myself and Mary B with our guest, Brandon Long. And we are just on here. We are, um, are going to really dive into the word today. Um, but before we do that, I just want to take a moment and play a song. But um, we're going to play a song by none other than Pastor Jay. It's gonna okay. it's gonna play I need thee by Pastor J.
things into our life that don't need to be spoken into our life just because it's coming out of our mouth and it's emphasizing itself. Um, I remember when I was working um, before the call center, um, and the call center was to make sales but also do customer service. Mm-hmm. I got to the point, right. I got so confident in my sales that I started dispositioning for my sales before I even offered it to the customer. And let me tell you, very few times I had to go back and change my disposition. But because I've already spoke that sale into existence, Amen. <laughs> it was already there. Amen. And that's how it is a lot of times that we, we can speak things into existence. We can speak life over our situations. We can Always. speak great things into existence. Always. But then we can also hurt ourselves by speaking damaging things into existence. And um, this is something that I wanted to talk about on Men's Sunday as well because I think it's important for us as men to not only control the things that we come out of our mouth because it not only does it affect us, but it affects our household too. Amen. You get what I'm saying? We Absolutely. say um, Absolutely. Are broke. Your household can be broke. You know what I'm saying? If we say, oh, man, we got to live paycheck to paycheck. Guess what, my brother? You're going to live paycheck to paycheck because these are the things that you're speaking out of your mouth. Amen. I don't, you know, my wife would say we're broke. No, we're not, baby. And I got to keep on saying that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm being real about it, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I might, I might not be able to afford to get your hair done right now. I might not be able to afford to get your nails done right now, okay? But we're not broke. You know what I'm saying? It's only temporary. Only temporary. We'll be fine next week. And, I, you know, I speak that into existence because that's the honesty of the situation. And, um... Um, Brandon? Yeah, and I want to... I just, wait, I just want to clarify. Uh, it wasn't him getting my hair and my nails done. Mm-hmm. It was just this one specific wig I want. Okay? I was going to apply it myself. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. Go ahead, Minister. <laughs> but if, if, if you pay close attention to the text going back to the King James Version, I'm a King James fanatic. And the King okay. James Version of the text, it says, death and life lies in the power of the tongue, and they that eat the fruit, uh, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you pay close Amen. attention to the text, you pay close attention to the text, if you understand, because the text uh, that I preached on this past Sunday was, the title was, uh, The Power of Words. And, if, and really yeah. understanding the power of words, if you understand the text with the text, your your words that come out of your mouth is literally a seed. And if you know anything about a seed, when you plant a seed, you're gonna reap the harvest from that seed. Amen. So mm-hmm. what what comes out of your mouth, whether it's good or bad, you're gonna reap what you sow. So you gotta be mm-hmm. very careful of the things that come out, come out of your mouth. Just like uh Minister Larry just said, if you speak evil, that's what's gonna come back to you. If you speak positive that's what's going to come Amen. back to you. The greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to man was not just the woman, was not just kids, was not just the things of this world, but the greatest gift, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, the very first thing that God gave man was the gift of to speak life. Amen. Amen. And you have the power to speak life in any situation that you may be facing any situation that you may be going through. If you're facing financial difficulty, you apply the word of God to that situation. You apply life to that situation and your mm-hmm. financial situation, your financial crisis will turn around. Why? Because the word says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. If you have, yeah. if you're having problems with sickness, if you're battling the sickness in your body, the Bible declares, that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with his stripes we are healed. You have the power to change the situation that you may be going through or experiencing at that time. But you got to mm-hmm. be very careful to what comes out of your mouth, mm-hmm. especially in the society we're living in today. You got to be very careful mm-hmm. of what comes out of your mouth. There was a woman mm-hmm. in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. This woman, she had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And the mm-hmm. Bible says that she heard that Jesus was coming in the town. 
if you understand anything about Jesus, what we proclaim Jesus to be, Jesus is the word wrapped in flesh today. So Jesus right. had during them times was, was the word wrapped in flesh. So she heard that the word was coming into town. Watch this. When she heard that the word was coming into town, what she did was she applied a word to her situation. She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall yes. be whole. Yes. When she spoke it out of her mouth, then she was mm-hmm. made whole. Many preachers preach, they preach that out of context and say when the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment, that's when she became whole. No, that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said when she spoke it out of her mouth, then she got her healing. Then she got her miracle. So she heard that the word was coming into town. When she heard that the word was coming into town, she applied a word to the word that was coming into town. And when she applied a word to the word that was already there, she got her miracle based on the word she spoke out of her mouth. What, am, what are you telling me, Brandon? All I'm telling you is when you're going through your situations, when you're going through your trials and your tribulations, all you got to do is learn how to apply the word to the word that was spoken to you and reverse that thing and let God do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. People don't understand the power, the power of your tongue, the power of what you say. Even the negative things you say to or for people or the negative things you mean for people and then great things happen to them and then negative things happen to you. Like my thing is I always say I want the best for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it reminds me a lot of times, you know, um, a lot of times when I'm talking to my youngest son, I have to get on him a lot of times and saying, don't say the word can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if when we say that, we can't. I can't do this. I, I can't do it. No, you need to try to do it. Amen. Stop saying you can't do it. Because when you're saying you can't do it, you're speaking that over yourself. And that's one thing I want my kids to understand, right. that there's nothing they can't do. Amen. Our kids are able to do anything and everything that they're capable of Amen. doing. Because of the fact that God made them special, then God made them and did his own image. Amen. And there's nothing that my God can't do. You get what I'm saying? So that's the thing we realize that the word can't shouldn't even really be in our vocabulary. <laughs> it's really a word that we can't do. Amen. Right. Because Absolutely. when we're using the word can't, we're also speaking that we can't do something. And I really believe that there's nothing I can't do. I can do anything that my mind allows me to do. I can do anything that God allows me to do. I know that through God I can do all things. So there's nothing that I can't do. Sometimes we, we're putting words in our vocabulary that shouldn't be there. And those words are being detrimental to us. It's being detrimental to our spirit. It's being detrimental to our soul because we're allowing those words to manifest itself in our life. Uh-huh. Words are like seeds. Right. And once you plant that seed, amen, that seed has to grow. Amen. Okay, oh, yeah. but it was a but it was a good seed or a bad seed. Guess what? That seed is still about to grow because that's the seed that you planted. Amen. And but if you plant good seeds, Amen. You spend you plant positive seeds. Guess what? Those are the things that have to grow out of it. Absolutely, it's the positivity. But we gotta watch watch the things that we say. Amen. We got to watch the things that we're speaking over our lives. Even when we're down and even when we're stressed out and even when we, we may feel low, we can, you can really lift yourself up again by saying, you know what? We're good. You know what? God is still good. You know what? I already know this is being worked out. You know what I'm saying? And that's really the thing about it. When you really just say, you got to speak life. Over your situation. Amen. That's what they say. Absolutely. Life and death is the power of the sun. Amen. You got to speak life Absolutely. over your situation. Absolutely. You got to speak life over yourself. You got to speak life over your children. You got to speak family. life over your family. You got to speak life over your home. Mm-hmm. You got to speak life over your finances. Okay? Absolutely. You got to speak life in yourself. Amen. 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 You got to speak life over different things. Mm-hmm. When I go to the car lot, I see life. It's the car that I want. Amen. <laughs> because I know my credit was this. trying to speak death into it. Amen. So when I look at the car lot, I see life into it. Amen. So I know my credit working against me. Amen. Oh but it's really the truth, though. It's really something we can apply. It, you know, at all points of our life. 
Amen. And watch this. I'm going to just throw this nugget out there just, just for free. This one is free. At the tip okay. of your tongue is either your future or your funeral. Mm. What does that mean? Brandon, I hope they heard you. Say it a little louder. The, I don't think they heard you. At the tip of your tongue is either your future or your funeral. That's not necessarily meaning natural death, but that goes back to the standards of when we, we were speaking earlier about your successes. How, you, how your future will turn out goes based upon what comes out of your mouth and the action that you portray mm-hmm. after what you, speak, what you speak out of your mouth. That's why Amen. it is very important that you are careful to what comes out of your mouth. Because your present mm-hmm. and your future depend on what, what you speak out of your mouth. Amen. That, that was a free Amen. one. That was a free <laughs> one. Amen. We got to pay for the next one. <laughs> that was but, free. And then, because the, the thing is, the very th- important thing here, y'all, is that we have to understand, especially within the world that we live in today, mm-hmm. even with looking at the color of our skin. We are held accountable for the things that comes out of our mouth and the actions that we portray. Right. People already hold us to a standard to fail. The world already look at us to fail, to not be anything, to be another statistic. So why Amen. is it that leverage of letting the negative come out of your mouth rather than the positive? Yes, you're going to go through things. Yes, you're going to go through storms. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulations. The Bible never says yes. you wouldn't go, and go through anything. Because the word says, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into diver temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it worketh patience. So it never says you wouldn't go through anything. But what it did tell you is when you do go through those storms, when you do go through those trials and those tribulations, remind yourself of the word. Have something to hold on to. Have something to stand on. Anytime a, a, a constructor, uh, constructor or uh, engineer is building something, he's building a house or building a, a building, they always lay down the foundation. They always have right. a strong mm-hmm. foundation because without that mm-hmm. strong foundation, that building won't be able to stand. And that's just even as we go through life, we have to have a strong foundation because if we don't Amen. have a strong foundation, the old folks said it's something like this. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have a solid mm-hmm. foundation, then what are you standing on? How are you going to mm-hmm. make it through this thing that we call life? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you got to be very, very that you have to be, other the people have to be very careful of the things that we say and the things that we do. It's very important. You have power in what you speak, whether it be negative or positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And when you talk about that foundation, we really build our own foundation with our mind and with the things that we speak into our life yeah. and the things that we allow to be spoken into our life. Yeah. Not only is it about, and when we say, Life and death is the power of the sun. Let's also clarify on something else, too. It's not only the things that you speak into your own life, amen, but it's also the things that we allow other people to speak upon our lives as well. Amen. Amen. We can't allow people to just speak anything into your life. You can't allow people to just speak anything into your future. You can't allow any other people to speak things into your life that's not supposed to be there, amen, because they are then causing destruction upon your life. Amen. That's why you got to watch yourself before you go down to New Orleans. You want to get involved with voodoo and everything like that. And you want to talk to Miss Cleo and everybody. Okay. I need you to watch yourself. Amen. Because you never know what it is that they're speaking over your life. You know what I'm saying? And the, the power of the tongue is very powerful. But when you allow somebody to put their tongue against you, amen, amen. The, you're allowing them to then speak your own funeral to existence. You allow them to speak your own financial problems to exist, your own marital issues to exist. Amen. That's why a lot of times when I pray, I pray for each contract that's been written up against me. Amen. 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 We got to realize sometimes that everybody's for our good. 
Amen. Sometimes the people that we cross are not always praying for you. A lot of times you have some people who are praying against you. Sometimes praying against you, you yes, sir. Person that's going to kiss you first. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the person that's right there next to you, they're going to kiss you first. But that's because they already got paid <laughs> for your assassination. You know what I mean? So that's where discernment comes in. That's where um, praying over your over your family and yourself, and um, yes, watching who prays over you. Yes, for also, um, you have to be very mindful of what you're saying mm-hmm. and how you're how you're presenting yourself. And I'm not saying to other people. I'm saying to God. <laughs> Because that's the only one that matters. Right. So you have to be very mindful, and a lot of people don't care. And, you know, we see it. It's very effective. The and power of the tongue. And sometimes the people that we are with, amen, because the Lord says, speak, damnation and son us as well. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes the people, they, you know, that's why we have to watch when we get connected to as we yeah. talked about in the beginning, you know, yeah. watching who you get connected to. Because if you're with somebody, and what they're trying to do is bring you down and tell you you can't do this and you're not this and with everything that you're not, yeah. amen, it's probably, it's probably a sign that that's not the person that you need to be with. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. Absolutely. the person that's going to be with you, amen, the person that God's going to have for you is going to speak life upon you, amen, they're going to speak life upon your future. Yeah. Because guess what? Your future impacts their future. Exactly. So they want your future to be great. Exactly. They never speak Absolutely. anything damaging upon you because you are a reflection of each other. Amen. So they want you to be the best you. And they're going to make sure that you're the best you every day. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know the person that God has for you versus you just being on your own. Because if you're with somebody and they're trying to put you down and they're trying to say you're not this, Amen. you're not that. You can't do this. You can't do that. That's being in an abusive relationship mm-hmm. by itself, amen, because amen. we get abused in work uh-huh. just like we can get abused physically. Amen. You know what I'm saying? We that, That's verbal abuse yes. that you're dealing with at that point. Which turns into psychological abuse because now you're starting to believe what the person is saying. And that's, that's so damaging, not only to your okay. psyche, but to your spirit. Because then you're not tuned in to what you need to be tuned in for so you can really do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. 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 I really like that, Brad. They said, um, at the tip of your tongue, is your future or your funeral? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the tip of your tongue. In, we have Minister future. Brandon Long on the line with us from Houston. Hey, J.D. We have um, Brandon Long, Minister Brandon Long from Houston, Texas. He's been a long time. We're going to say brother because after, you know, <laughs> after good. years, it's like we're Absolutely. not even friends yeah. anymore. So. Yeah, we're brothers and sisters, yeah. Yes. Amen to that. Amen to that. Um, and um, so what we've been talking about on the air is um, life and death being in the power of the sun, to watch the things that you speak, to watch the things that you are speaking over your life. Um, The point that my brother just made that was very powerful said that at the tip of your sun is your future or your funeral. Amen. Amen. I don't know if somebody needs to catch that again. I forgot you said that again. (laughs) Amen. But it says at the tip of your sun is it your yeah. future or your funeral? I love that right there. Man. I love yeah. that. I love that because it's so true. Mm-hmm. Amen. And we yeah, because we, we find ourselves, we find ourselves many things that we go through, like dealing with sicknesses or financial uh, crisis or whatever the case may be. We think that there are curses from a long time ago. What those signify is the stuff that you spoke out of your mouth. That's why you're dealing with some of the stuff that you're dealing with. People play all the time about, you know, different things and different different scenarios. And I tell people all the time, man, be careful what you say. You're you claiming that you broke, 
that stuff going to start end up happening because it's coming out of your mm-hmm. mouth. You're sowing that seed. And, bec- and then when, they, when they, it comes to fruition, then they reflect back or they trying to figure out why am I having this financial crisis? Why did I just lose my job or why right. this happened or why that happened? You spoke that. You spoke like that you into it. existence. You said it. It came out of your mouth. You spoke that mm-hmm. into existence. Now, now you got to try to turn that thing around by by applying the word of God and changing your actions and changing your words that you may do prosper now. Mm-hmm. But in essence, what you speak, it's going to come back. You, The Bible says you reap right. what you sow. So you, they, you have to be very careful, people of God, of what, what you speak out of your mouth because your life depends Amen. on it. Amen. It does. Your life truly depends on it. I had, we had a, 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 a mature, we had a, a a man of God that was a part, and uh-huh. he was making a, 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 I guess asking a jokeful question about what if this happened or what if that happened, and the very thing that he was saying, what if, actually happened, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. go, and that's why we tell people it, you have to be very, be very careful. Y'all of what comes mm. out of your mouth. Because mm-hmm. watch this. When you speak, whatever you speak out of your mouth, it may not affect you. But because you have people connected to you, what you speak, it may not affect you, right. but it'll affect the ones that's close to you. So right. not only what you speak hinders you, but it hinders everybody that's connected to you. Your family starts exactly. struggling. Your family starts battling with sickness. Your family starts going through this hell or going through that dilemma, or going through this confusion or conflict because you spoke out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. You got to be very careful because not only do the words that come out of your mouth affect you, but it affects those that's close to you. Right. And I think with, with everything that's going on, and today, I think with everything going on right now in the world, we got coronavirus going on. You got them talking about a, a possible recession. And then they say they have the people in America might catch the virus and everything like that. But the thing is, we can really speak life over our situation even at this time, right? You know what I'm saying? I believe that we can speak life over our situation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't go out there and don't go don't go washing your hands. Right. And don't go do and keep your hands inside at home and just speak life of yourself. I'm not saying that. But what I am right. saying is that <laughs> don't speak. Don't speak a virus into you that's not into you. Right. Amen. 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 Don't speak a virus into you that's not into you. Amen. Amen. That's good. Don't speak um that's good. you know what I'm saying? Things that go on in the world don't speak that over your life. They speak that into your life, amen, because, amen, you have, you know, a God that's bigger than that, amen. 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 I'm traveling to New York later on this week, and I know that my family raised some concerns because they say it's a, um, a state of emergency in New York right now. Yes. And you know what I say? I say I serve a God that's bigger than any kind of virus, amen. Amen. Now, I mean, I'm still going to keep myself safe. And we still go down there with our wife and our hand sanitizer. Yes. I might even go on Amazon and order the medical mask. We don't see what happens. But at the end of the day, amen, I'm not going to allow for fear to take over. I'm not going to allow for the government to speak. At all. I'm not going to allow for the government to speak life or death into me either, amen. So, um, I mean, really, really got to really watch um, – Everything that we speak, even when it comes over our finances, over our health, Amen. over our families, over different situations that we're going through, so all of that, you can really speak life into it. You know what I'm saying? It's like this. If you go to work, if you wake up, and um, before you go to work, and you say, oh, man, I don't even want to go to work today. This is going to be a bad day. Oh, uh, this is going to be such a drag. Uh, I don't want to be here. Guess what? You're not going to feel like being there that day. <laughs> Nothing about that day is going to make yourself feel good to you. Nothing about that day is going to turn around. That whole day is going to be a drag because that's what you spoke when you first woke up over that day. 
You know what I'm saying? Amen. So if we go Sephora in. Sephora said, nowadays, we got to watch our thoughts as well. Amen. 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 Watch our thoughts as well because it's the things that we're thinking that starting to manifest itself. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We think it before we speak it. Amen. We think it before we speak it. It's, it's a thought that's in us, and then we speak that thought yeah. in, out, and then all of a sudden, the starting to happen to us. We got to change our form of thinking. Right. We got to change our form of thinking. And sometimes you got to speak life over something in order to change your form of thinking. Amen. Amen. Yeah, have you ever been broke, but you said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to have money soon. I'm going to have money soon. Fun. And it felt better in just that fact of knowing I'm going to have money soon. Yeah. All of a sudden, just that right there made you feel better. All yourself. your bills are paid. You're still going to work. You know you have income coming in. You just got to, you know, you keep it going. Sometimes we can change our thoughts just by the things that we speak out of our mouth. Amen. Sometimes we can change Amen. the very thing that we're speaking, that we're thinking by speaking life over that. Yes. Because the thing is, let's be real about it, the negative thoughts are going to come to mind. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see negative things sometimes. It's just going to happen when we start thinking, uh, yeah, this money is negative. Let's be good. You know, uh, man, I don't know what we're going to do about this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to happen in our mind. But if you start speaking and changing that and say, you know what? We're going to be okay. Amen. You know what? God's still good. Amen. You know what? God is bringing me this far to let me go. At that point, you just kind of start ministering to yourself. Amen. I say a lot of Absolutely. times when I'm out preaching that as, as I minister to somebody else, I'm also ministering to myself at the same time. Amen. Because as I'm speaking and I'm preaching to you, I'm also speaking and preaching life over myself Amen. and over the things that I'm going through. You know, we as preachers and as ministers also go through things too. I don't know what they think it is. I don't think they think we got our ordination license that was traded all of our companies. <laughs> Rainbow the unicorn. Yeah, I think they think that was your ordination license. That's the rainbow the unicorn, unicorn from that point, and you're good to go. Hey, Amen. I don't know if that's been your case, Brandon, but that's been the case for me. <laughs> yeah, man, I've 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 experienced a lot of stuff, man. Especially just like y'all just said, when we go to work, that was one of my my biggest things. Is that my day determined. My day is determined based upon how I'm feeling and what I speak. If I speak, mm-hmm. Lord, I don't want to be here today, or I don't want <laughs> want to even deal with this job today. That's the that's the day kind of day that you're going to have. You got to learn to speak peace in your life. All of that mm-hmm. complaining and murmuring that that shouldn't even be a part of our vocabulary in this day and time. We need to learn to get back to a place where we're speaking life, where we're speaking peace, where we're speaking in our everyday lives. Amen. 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 I think that um, as we move forward, amen, um, that we need to start watching the very things that we say. I think we need to start watching the very things that we allowed to come out of our mouth. Um then we need to start being more careful about some of the things that we that we speak. Um even in the slightest moment. Uh this person I'm gonna be any good. You know what I'm saying? Um speaking about people, um, you know what I'm saying, and everything is gonna be something that we can control. Right. Uh we ultimately can control what comes out of our mouth. Yeah. <laughs> we ultimately can control the things that we're saying. Yeah. And therefore you can actually control your future or your funeral. But the thing is, in controlling it, um, we need to be mindful of the things that we're saying as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're saying we're speaking negativity over our marriage. We can't expect ourselves to go home to a happy wife. You know what I'm saying? That happy life you're trying to get. So, um, you know, even even when you deal with struggles in your relationship or in your marriage, you got to say, you know what? Thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? I know this is the one for me. Amen. Because you said so. Start with that. So, um... <laughs> 
Start with that. Even in a, and same thing gonna be your job. If you say, you know what, this is gonna be a bad job. I don't want to go here. I don't feel like being here. I can't believe I got to go back to this job. Every day, that's going to be how you feel. But if you go there and you really say, you know what, this going to be a great day at work. I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to allow myself to make the money, amen. Yes. I'm going to get promoted. Amen. I'm going to get a raise. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Those are the things that start happening as well. We got to speak. We got to speak life over things. You know what I'm saying? Although we may not really feel, feel like speaking life. Right. Okay. It's been plenty of times where I know I didn't want to go to my job. I knew the calls was going to be going back to back like it was a Drake song or like the New England Patriots going to the Super Bowl. And I knew I was like, I don't want to deal with these calls. I don't want to deal with these, with these people. I don't want to deal with these people's uh-huh. mortgages. I don't want to deal with none of it. Right? It might be hard to speak that life, amen. amen. Especially when you gotta wake up at six, seven o'clock in the morning just so you can be at work all the time, amen. You know, I don't know how much life you have at the very beginning of the morning, <laughs> but you gotta be careful of what those things that we speak as well, even um, even though we may not feel like that at that time. Um, you know, uh, that's the key point about it. What are one of the things, um, Brandon? What are one of the things that you do in the morning to make sure that you're going to have, like, what are one of the affirmations, I would say, that you say to yourself in the morning? Mm-hmm. Um, Babe, what are one of the affirmations that you say? Um, I think I just say that it's going to be a great day. Mm-hmm. Um Another thing that I learned to do, too, is I learned to start listening to gospel music in the morning time, too. Yes. I learned that the music we listen to in the morning time can also affect us as well. Definitely. It's, allowing, it's what we're allowing to be put into our spirits. Amen. And that can really affect us as well and um, and really get us going as well. So we got to watch the things that we put into our spirit. Um, watch. Um, the things that we're allowing to feed our spirit, especially in the morning time. Amen. Um, so it's just so much that we want to pay attention to and that we have to pay attention to. Yeah. Um, um, one of the things, well, when I wake up in the morning, um, I try to always, I try to always remember to tell God three things that I'm thankful for. So after I tell him the three things that I'm thankful for and I thank Jesus for his sacrifice and dying for me, I always try to be in that spirit during the morning times because it's already hard for me to get up in the morning right there. Mm-hmm. So I have to really find and I did that this morning, praise report. Right, babe? Mm-hmm. I was being very negative, right? Mm-hmm. No truth, shame the devil. <laughs> I was being very negative, mm-hmm. and I had, um, like, God was like, to me, God, you know, like, you know, snap out of it. And I got to work, and everybody was super nice and super um, welcoming, and just, I had an awesome day. I had an awesome mm-hmm. day, because God turned it right on around. And that's Amen. all you need. You just have to pray over yourself. Amen. And, and the question was, uh, Minister Brandon, was... What do you do in the morning to make sure that you have that great day? Like, what's the affirmation the you say to yourself? Like, I, I always tell God three things that I'm thankful for. The very first thing that I do when I get up in the morning, as soon as I open my eyes, is I tell God thank you. And I tell God thank you because it would have been a possibility that I wasn't even able to wake up. So that alone itself is everything enough for me to thank God Amen. because he's given me another opportunity to live. And once I thank God for another day, I speak life into my day that today is going to be a good day. Amen. When I speak today, it's going to be a good day. I believe not only do you have to speak life, but you even got to believe and have faith behind the words that you speak. Can't just say something. You got to believe right. what's coming out of your mouth is 
is going right. to happen. Have faith that it is going to happen. So I, once I speak it, I believe what I say, and then I just go into worship mode. That, and that that sets the tone for my day because I go in, I go into worship. Mm-hmm. So I thank him. I I acknowledge him first of all, and I thank him, and then I worship him. Acknowledge, thank, and then worship. Those are my things. Amen. And Queenie said it's important to command your morning, pray first thing, and give your day to God for Him to navigate. Amen. Exactly. That's what. Amen. You can't. You're not in control of any of it. Anything can happen throughout that day. You have to have the strength to deal with whatever's going to happen to you that day. Absolutely. <laughs> if you're so worried about things that you have no control of, that's when you stop really being able to go into your destiny and what you're supposed to be doing because you're worried about everything else other than what God has already laid out for you. Amen. And touch on what um, Queen is just saying right there. I mean, it says, pray first and then give your day to God for him to navigate. Amen. Are you really catching that? You know what I'm saying? How many of us don't go anywhere outside of our parking lot Amen. until we first put the address in the GPS? <laughs> right? Amen. How many of us first don't go anywhere outside of that parking lot until we put the address in the GPS to know where we're going? Right. Amen. amen. And that's the thing that we need to do in the morning time. We need to pray. Amen. And we really need to ask God to navigate us through that day. Amen. amen. Or else we're going to be just like it is. You don't put the address to the GPS. You're going to be lost. <laughs> amen. But if we allow God to navigate us through the day, if we allow ourselves to be navigated through the day by God, amen, we're not going to be lost. Right. Amen. Because and that's the GPS system that don't lose signal. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Lost me yet. <laughs> oh, man, this has been a great show. Again, you're tuning in to Soaring Like Eagles of myself, as well as this wonderful lady behind me, Mary B. And then also today's guest is none other than my brother in ministry, Brandon Long. Um, and I'm so Thank glad you. that we got a chance to really um, talk on this subject of um, – the things that we speak, amen. I know I'm going to be even more careful to speak um, great things going forward in my life, amen, make sure that I'm being an example of the things that I speak, amen, um, over my life and over my family and over every situation that we go through. Um, so I thank you, um, Brandon Long, for joining us thank today. Thank you, Brandon. No problem, and no problem. Tell, tell, tell your wife and the girls that we said, hey, we love them. And, Brandon, if you could just, um, for a short minute, you know what I'm saying, before we close out here, just tell everybody, you know what I'm saying, um, about your, about the church that you uh, minister at, um, how we can find you, look you up on Facebook, all that. Okay. Um, well, the church I go to, again, is Christian Life Community Church under the leadership of Bishop Dwayne uh, Sheridan at 2100 James Bowie Drive in Baytown, Texas, where I am uh, the youth pastor. Um, I have an Instagram at uh, I am uh, dot B Long, uh, and I have uh, Facebook. I really, I'm really not too much on on Facebook. If you really want to see anything, you can go to Instagram to catch me. But uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm really not on Facebook a lot. I'm I'm more on on Instagram and then uh uh, uh long. Amen. Uh, so you can catch me on on any of those. Amen. Amen. And um, you all always know you can catch us. You can catch us on Thursday night on Thursday night on two nineteen to talk. Seven p.m. Central Time. Where for us. For the people that's tuning in on the East Coast, I forgot. So there you go. 7 p.m. Central time. Uh, we don't be saying, you're right, we don't be telling Central yes, time. Yes, sorry. And then people were, yeah, mm-hmm. sorry. Sorry, you guys, but yes, it's Central time. 7 p.m. Central time. Um, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sephora. And thank you so much, Queenie. We love mm-hmm. you. 
Um, first of all, um, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time, 219 to talk. It's me, LB. You get a different LB. <laughs> um, Queenie, of course, JD the Barber, Fitness Break. Make sure that you listen in 7 p.m. Thursdays. And then also Monday, 7 p.m. Central. Make sure that you tune in for Soaring Like Eagle. Um, also, we have JD's Man Cave. Just stay on my Gospel Soul page. You have full content. Just stay on the page. You'll be able to see everything. Um, also, um, hey, man. Um, yeah, definitely tune in to everything going on. Hey, man, there's a lot going on in my gospel show. My gospel show, Mixer, hey, man, is also coming up, hey, man, on March 21st oh, yeah. in Houston, Texas. So you definitely want to make sure that you're there for that. So my gospel show, Mixer, at 5301 Polk Street. It's going to be a great time in Houston that day as well. Yeah, make sure um, that y'all are watching. Um, I'm sure we're going to be live. Yeah. We're all gonna be there. You get to see everybody come out. Brandon, you gonna come? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll come. <laughs> okay, it's the twenty first. It's in Houston. We right down the street. We are gonna represent for Baytown in Houston all together. And in San Antonio, we are gonna just do a connecting, and we're gonna represent. But we want to make sure that you all come out to the mixer. It's gonna be on the twenty first, and I do well. What was that? Three. Yeah, um, we'll get back with you on the top. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's on the page, you guys. It's on the page. It's on the page. Um, we'll be there all day, so. Let's go ahead and close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Um, Mr. Brandon, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this broadcast. We thank you, God, for these two individuals who are reaching the world through social media, through Uh, radio, God, through speaking the word just in general, God, to us, your people. We pray, God, that you continue to bless them, bless their ministry, bless their lives, bless their home, bless their finances, Father. We ask now, God, that the word that have been hid in our hearts, that we may apply that word to our everyday lives and our everyday walk. God, that our lives may be pleasing unto you, Father. We pray that if there's anything that is in us, God, that is not like you in our minds and our hearts, take it out of us, God, and set us free. For your word says to create in us a clean heart and God renewing us a right spirit. So, Father, I ask God even on tonight that you will allow your people to sleep with peace, that you allow them to rest on tonight, Father God, not toss and turn, Father, but be able to experience great rest on tonight. Lay hands on their children, lay hands on that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, Father. We be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory, for you deserve it all. God, it's in Jesus' wonderful name that we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much, Brandon. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure Absolutely. to um to fellowship with my brother here, man. Um great brother in Christ. I definitely appreciate you. Um Love y'all, yeah, man. Thank you. We love you. Yes, sir. Um and all the girls. From the woman down yeah. to the girls. <laughs> Amen. Remember, this is another episode of My Gospel Soul, where we're breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the Word of God. And for everybody, um, remember, without faith, it is impossible to please please God. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Who cares? God cares. God cares, y'all. Act like it, okay? We love y'all. We'll see you all next Monday, 7 p.m. Make sure that you are following my Gospel Soul magazine and make sure that you like. We love you guys for real. Oh, my God. See, there I am, old lady. Oh, my God. 13 comments, one share, and four views already. <laughs> Yeah, we have like six, seven people listening there, Babe, on My Gospel Soul, we have 75 views and 30 people already reached. Oh, wow. 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 Babe, 168 people reached. Wait, mm-hmm. is that mine? Oh, is that? Wait, what is that? I don't know that's mine. 
say because this one is also um when my got some soul shared it again. Oh. Look, 158 people reached. Y'all are very loud for some people that was recording. Yes, y'all were. Between the bathroom to the room, GT in, and now I tell you, y'all was acting like me, bro. Bad. 168 people. Oh, somebody's talking. 